أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنا أرسلناك بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ولا تسأل عن أصحاب الجحيم ولن ترضى عنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم بعد الذي جاءك من العلم ما لك من ما لك من الله من ولي ولا نصير الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يتلونه حق تلاوته أولئك يؤمنون به ومن يكفر به فأولئك هم الخاسرون يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأني فضلتكم على العالمين واتقوا يوما لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها عدل ولا تنفعها شفاعة ولا هم ينصرون وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين وإذ جعلنا البيت مثابة للناس وأمنا واتخذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وعهدنا إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل أن طهرا بيتي للطائفين للطائفين والعاكفين والركع السجود وإذ قال إبراهيم رب اجعل هذا بلدا آمنا وارزق أهله من الثمرات من, من آمن منهم وارزق أهله من الثمرات من آمن منهم بالله واليوم الآخر قال ومن كفر فأمتعه قليلا ثم أضطروا إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد فإن نصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار حياكم الله brothers and sisters and uh, episode number 29 of تفسير القرآن and maybe today will be the last حلقة in Ramadan because today is the 29th of Ramadan and uh, today is the Jum'ah, the blessed day and tomorrow maybe uh, the Eid day we are waiting maybe after Maghrib they will announce if it is uh, Eid or not so if it is Eid so today it will be the last halqa and uh, inshallah uh, I will announce how uh, the halqa will uh, continue after Ramadan because inshallah inshallah we will keep this halqa until we finish the Qur'an uh, maybe once a week or twice a week so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our deeds may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, may Allah accept our deeds may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of you طيب. today the ayah number 120 وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ and never will the Jews and the Christians approve of you until you follow their religion. So this is clear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslims, telling the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, and also all the Muslims, that this is impossible that the Jews and Christians follow Islam. Okay, but uh, what about the people who are accepting Islam every day? Many people accept Islam, Christians, Jews, okay? Uh, the ayah, it means, as the scholars mentioned, they mean as a whole ummah, as a whole nation. The ayah mean, means that the whole Christian community will not accept Islam, okay? So they, there will be, I mean, the majority of them will stay as Christians and also the Jews. Most of them will stay as Jews, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, told the Muslims, okay, yani don't work hard to a level that they will accept Islam. And uh, brothers, sisters, this is very important, the da'wah, okay, or generally speaking, this is very important if you are going to plan for something. If you will start a company, if you will start uh, a school, if you will start uh, a study, Okay, or if you are going to read a book to memorize the Quran, you should use this information, like this information. Okay, so for example, if your plan is um, the number of the Jews, for example, uh, 200 millions, and uh, my, our, our plan that after 10 years all of them will become Muslim, this is a wrong plan. Okay, yes, we have to work to do our best, to give them da'wah, to tell them what is right and what is wrong. But don't put in your mind that the Jews will finish. They will stay. They will stay. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعْ مِلَّهُ They will not be pleased with you. Okay? So, as I said, يعني, يعني for example, nowadays, يعني, subhanallah, you read something or you see a YouTube. There is a lady, her age, 85, and now she is, mashallah, hafiba. She memorized the whole Quran within six years. So now you say, okay, if this lady memorized the Quran, the old lady, within six years, I should do it within only one year. If it is possible for an old lady, also it is possible for me, because I am only 50. Okay, but, uh, yani, you should uh, yani, be some, a person who deals with the real life. Okay, maybe this lady, number one, she is an Arab. So it is easy for this lady to read Quran. And you are not Arab. It is very difficult for you, for you to read Quran. Number two, she has free time. She is a grandmother or grand, a mother of a grandmother and sitting at home doing nothing. Just telling the stories for her children and her grandchildren, and also yani, praying and fasting, alhamdulillah. While you are busy, you are working every day 12 hours, and you have three kids, and one of them has a medical problem, the other one has, uh, and also the husband is not helpful, or, or the, the wife is not helpful. So be careful, yani, uh, please brothers and sisters. Also this, maybe it is a side point, that watching the WhatsApp and the YouTube can cause a kind of uh, what what we call yeah, maybe maybe a kind of depression. Why? Because you will see this person memorized Quran and his age is nine years old. Okay, then you say he is nine years old and he finished the Quran and he's the first pe person in the competition and I am thirty three. And uh, even I'm not memorizing half of the Quran. Okay, you will feel very bad. You will feel very bad. Okay, so be careful, brothers, sisters. Spend the time, or instead of spending the time with your, your mobile, watching this WhatsApp and the other WhatsApp, Instagram, Snap, Facebook, switch off all of these things and open the book and read. Learn, attend, okay? Then you can achieve, insha'Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for you. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this surah, in this ayah, وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ And subhanallah, how many years the Muslims are giving da'wah to them from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until now, they did not accept the Islam. I mean as a whole community, they did not accept Islam. The Christians coming to our countries and they are giving da'wah to the Muslims, subhanallah. Also they are working hard. So the point is now, we should believe that the whole, Muslim, the whole Christian community will not accept Islam. The whole, the whole Jews, or I mean all the Jews will not accept Islam, but no doubt. One here, the other there, 10, 20, 100 will accept Islam. And this is happening. They are accepting Islam. Mainly the Christians, not like the Jews. Because as we mentioned, the Prophet وسلم, said, لو آمن بي عشر من اليهود لآمنت بي يهود. If 10 of the Jews accepted Islam, it means 10 leaders of them, then the whole Jews will accept Islam. But they are very difficult, subhanAllah. Not like the Christians. وَلَنْ تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَنْ نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Until you follow their religion. They want us to follow them. And also we want them to follow us. And everyone should present his proofs. We'll present the Quran and Sunnah. And what can they present? طيب حتى تتبع ملتهم. Then Allah سبحانه وتعالى said, "قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى." Indeed, the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى. Okay. So what we have, or what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم brought to us, is the guidance. It means it is the real guidance. Then Allah said, "ولا إن تبعت أهواءهم." Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and, uh, sorry, if you were to follow their desires, after what has come to you of knowledge, you would have against Allah no protector or helper. So what do we have? Huda. What do they have? Al-Hawa. Al-Hawa. What is the difference? Al-Huda means guidance. Al-Hawa means desire. Okay? They are not following the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the beginning, they changed the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They hide some of the Torah. They hide some of the Injil. And also they did not, yani, if you read their, their history, you will find that they, they did not write the Injil and the Torah at the time of Isa or at the time of Musa, alayhi salatu was salam. They did not care about the, the, the Torah and the Injil like the Muslims. Yani subhanallah, the Muslims from the beginning, they were writing the Quran and memorizing the Quran. Okay, and there are yani, group of people. They are called Al-Qurra. Qurra, the, the word, this means the readers. Okay, of course it means the readers of the Quran. It means those who memorize the Quran. Until now, until now, if you go to any Muslim country, and also if you go to any Muslim community in the non-Muslim countries, you will find half of the Quran. You will find half of the Quran. MashaAllah. Yeah, for example, when I went to India, I, I found the half of the Quran. MashaAllah. Young boys, they memorize the Quran. And they are not Arabs, but they are Muslims. And they love the Quran. They memorize the Sunnah. They memorize Bukhari Muslim. Also, when I went to UK, you will find half of the Quran. They are not Arabs, but they are Muslims, and they love the Quran and Sunnah. So, from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi the Muslims memorize the Quran, and the Muslims write the Quran. What is called Hifd al-Sudur wa sutur The Quran in their chests, and also the Quran in their books, the Mus'haf. We are a unique nation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best nation for the people, among people. 
the people of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is the difference. We have Huda and they have Hawa. Huda means the guidance, Hawa means the desire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Wala in tabata ahwa ahum. Okay. If you were to follow their desires, after what has come to you of knowledge, you would have against Allah no protector or helper. Of course, the Prophet ﷺ never. The Prophet ﷺ will not follow their desire. And he did not follow their desires. But this warning for us. Be careful, O Muslims. Don't follow the desire of the non-Muslims. Maybe some of them likes to some of them like to make a deal oh muslims come let's meet together let's talk about the agreements that we have all of us agree that ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is a prophet all of us love ibrahim the jews love ibrahim the christians love ibrahim the muslims love ibrahim okay so let's work on the uh, uh, on the overlap area. Peace. Okay, now they are repeating the word peace, 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 peace. Of course, everyone wants the peace. But actually, if you look at their actions, you will not find the peace. Look how they torture the Muslims. Subhanallah. From the beginning, they tried to kill the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu They put the poison inside the food for our Prophet Muhammad They betrayed the Muslims in the Battle of Banu Quraida, or it is called Ghazwat al-Ahzab, the trench. So if we come with them for agreement, for peace, they will betray. They will not follow the agreement. They will not fulfill their promise. Subhanallah. And from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also, they said, oh Muhammad, let's worship your Lord one day and you worship our Lord and or our God one day. The Prophet, uh, sorry, uh, Allah said, what do law tudhinu fayudhinun? What do law tudhin fayudhinun? They wish that you compromise, then they will compromise. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ All those who disbelieve, I'm not going to worship what you worship. And also you're not going to worship what I worship. At the end of the surah, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ I have my own religion and you have your own religion. Okay, so to think or to, to believe that the disbelievers will leave their religion to Islam, this is impossible. I mean as a whole nation. So don't waste your time for a wrong goal or impossible aim and goal and target. So Allah says, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى وَلَنْ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِي وَلَا نصير. So brothers and sisters, be careful. If you try, to agree with them, to do agreement. Wallahi, uh, let's put Quran, Injil, Torah in one book. Let's make a place for everyone to worship Allah. All of them in one place, Muslims, Jews, Christians. Okay, no need to fight. Okay, this is haram and this is wrong. Why? Because we believe that they are mushriks. And also they believe we will be in the hellfire. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, okay, وَقَالَتْ الْيَهُودُ لَيْسَتْ النَّصَارَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَقَالَتْ نَصَارَ لَيْسَتْ الْيَهُودُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ And they told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will be in the hellfire for a few days, then you will come in our place in the hellfire. So they believe that the Muslims will be in the hellfire. So don't believe them if they say we like to have a peaceful life. Don't believe them. They will try their best to kill us. And you can't read the news to re realize that.
وَلَنْ اِتَّبَعْتَ آوَاهُمْ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those two, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ Those to whom we have given the book, recite it with its true recital. Okay, here, what is the meaning, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ Okay. Some scholars said it means that the Jews, the Christians, the people of the book. Why? Because this ayat, okay, if you notice, if you, or if you remember from uh, the verse number 30 or 40, Allah started to talk about Ben Israel, the children of Israel. Okay, so anything here is about the, the, the people of the book. الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ Okay, so those who know the real religion, they know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last prophet and he should be followed. Allah said, أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ Okay, they are the ones who believe in it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the hadith that there are some types of people who will get double reward. Allah will give them the reward twice. One of them, or one of, I mean, one of these types, he, he mentioned the hadith three. One of them, رجل آمن بنبيه ثم آمن به. A man who believed in his prophet, then he believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, who believed that Isa is the slave of Allah, a messenger of Allah. He believes that Allah is the only true God. And when he knows Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he believed in Muhammad. And in Islam, so Allah will give him double reward. Like the uh, Abdullah ibn Salam, radiyallahu ta'ala, he believed in Musa and he believed in Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. طيب so يتلونه حق تلاوته okay so what is the meaning of يتلونه here يتلونه as a translation of يتلونه it means reciting it okay uh, those to whom we have given the book recite it with its true recital some scholars say يتلونه here the word to recite, it means to follow. It means they followed it in the correct way, without changing, without hiding, concealing. Okay? They followed Islam in the correct way. They followed Musa والسلام, in the correct way. Then he said, they are the ones who believe in it. And whoever disbelieves in it, it is they who are the losers. If the person disbelieves in the Quran and in the authentic religion, then they are the losers. They are the real losers. The person should follow the truth. As we are repeating this concept again and again. You, you should follow the truth. You should follow al-haqiqah, the facts. And you'll find them in the religion of Allah. Uh, also here, as Sheikh Muhammad Rahimullah mentioned, what is the meaning yatluna haqqa tilawati? Okay. Yani, uh, yes, here the story is about the people of the book or, and mainly the Jews. But also, we can take this ayah as a general meaning. They recite it in the correct way. It, and he, يعني, he mentioned some benefits from this ayah, Shaykh Muhammad Rahimullah, that when we read the Quran, we should read the Quran in the proper way. How? To pronounce the letters in the correct way. To know the meanings of the ayat. To apply the rules mentioned in the Quran. 
This is the meaning. You, we recite it in the correct way. But for example, I open the Mus'haf and I read. And I'm not following the rules of the Arabic language and the rules of Tajweed. And I don't understand. I don't pay attention. I don't concentrate. I don't reflect the Quran. Then you not get the, 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 the real benefit of the Quran. Okay? Yani like now, many Muslims, okay, uh, they read the Quran how many times in, in Ramadan? I finished the Quran five times. Good. Sorry. This is very good. Reading the Quran, every letter Allah will give you one hasana, then ten times. This is very good. Okay? But this is not the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Okay? It is not his way that you open the Quran. Alif Lam Mim Dalik al Kitabu la Raiba fi Yudal Muttaqin Aladina Umin Rubil Raib Rimur Salih. Do you think that you can understand? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La Yafqa al Quran, Man Qara Fi Akal Min Thalath. The one who reads the Quran within three days or less than three days, he cannot understand. He cannot understand. Of course, you are reading. It means you are reading the Quran very fast. You don't know. You, you come across a verse about the hellfire. Something about uh, paradise. About Musa, about the mountains, about... Okay. But you are not reflecting anything. Why? Because your brain programmed to finish the Quran within two days. Because I challenge my friends. No. The Prophet ﷺ was reading the Quran how many times? Once a month in Ramadan. Every Ramadan he was studying the Quran of the Jibreel. How many times? Once. Except the last year, he did it twice. So, yani, do you know, brothers and sisters, every day when we say once a month, it means every day one chapter. One, one just one part. And... One part means 20 pages. And of course, at that time, not the full Quran was revealed. Okay, so maybe less than 20 pages. But let's say 20 pages. So, if you read it carefully, maybe, I mean for one juice, maybe you need one hour. But imagine, brothers and sisters, <laughs> this is very important. This is very important, brothers and sisters. When we read the Quran, we read it in the correct way. Yani maybe a good point, inshallah, uh, to mention. One time I was talking with my friend, he's a psychiatrist. And also a psychologist. We were talking about the, yani, those people who have uh, yani, psychological problems. Uh, depression uh, so uh, I, I told him so uh, yeah, what about reading the Quran he said no doubt reading the Quran is the, wor the yeah, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's alhamdulillah Muslim doctor Kuwaiti Muslim doctor so he said no doubt the Quran is our book reading the Quran is of course perfect but he said the problem when we read the Quran we are not reading the Quran the proper way so uh, if the patient, for example, the depressed person is going to read the Quran in the proper way, then it will be very good for him to treat the depression. He means when you read the Quran, you understand and you reflect, you live with the Quran. Many times I mentioned this example. When the Prophet ﷺ came to the Surah Al-An'am, قُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِّنْ فَوْقِكُمْ أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا وَيُذِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَأْسَ بَعْضٍ He was not reading this, this ayah in this way. He was reading this, this, this ayah. قُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِّنْ فَوْقِكُمْ He will stop. And he will ask Allah, أعوذ بوجهك أو من تحت أرجلكم He will stop then. He will say, أعوذ بوجهك 
أو يلبسكم شيعا ويضيق بعضكم بأس بعض Then we stop and say هذه أهون هذه أهون The ayah means say that Allah is able to send a punishment from above above you or from beneath you or to make you sects in fighting in fighting so the first time the prophet sallallahu said a'udhu oh bi allah i'm seeking i'm seeking refuge in your face the second time said the same thing the third time said hadhi aisar this is easier so imagine brothers sisters this is very important when we read the quran we should we should not think that when i when i will finish the quran now i'm in page 163 uh, and how many pages okay 600 pages so about 400 like uh, yani many times I'm, when the students study the, a book with the sheikh they ask the sheikh sheikh when will, will we finish the quran or, or the, the book during how many weeks will we finish the book okay. the point is not to finish the book or not the point is did you get the benefit from the book or not okay suppose that we finish the book within one week then i ask you you know nothing from the book okay so are you happy just because you write at the end of the book we finished the book with the sheikh ahmed al rumh okay in ramadan 1441 during the full curfew yes some some muslims like that they like to 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 get the certificate okay we certify mr or miss blah 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 okay because they attend the full course with and they pass the exam now we are in a time many people like to get the certificate so when you read the quran try to follow the rules of tajweed try to understand to reflect to apply okay as we mentioned Abdullah Mas'ud said, إِذَا سَمِعْ إِذَا قَالَ اللَّهَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَأَرْعِهَا سَمْعَكَ When you read in the Quran, all those who believe, be careful. Listen carefully. There is something good, Allah will tell you to do it. And there is something bad, Allah will tell you to avoid it. So it is for your benefit. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Sorry, الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يتلون حق تلاوته أولئك يؤمنون به ومن يكفر به فأولئك هم الخاسرون. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "O children of Israel, remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you, and that I preferred you over the worlds." The same I repeated the second time in this surah. Okay, Allah wants to remind them. Okay, because, you know, if you have uh, a son or a daughter disobeying you, so you need to remind them, yani, oh son, please, yani, I did a lot for you. I am working day and night to keep you in this good school, to buy the, the things for you. Okay? Yani, we don't like to say that, but sometimes we feel that we should tell our children, because they are wasting the money. They are not listening to us because they are careless about their school homework. Okay? So we try to remind them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the children of Bani, uh, the children of Israel. Don't forget the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Bani Israel at Kuru Ni'mati and Lati and Amtu Alaikum wa anni fadaltukum ala al alameen. Uh, I preferred you over the walls. And as we mentioned, if you remember, the walls at, the, at that time, but not now, because now we are the best nation. I mean, the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu are the best nation. But at that time, they were the best, the children of Israel. يَوْمًا لَا تَجِزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسِ شَيْئًا And fear a day 
when no soul will suffice for another soul at all and no compensation will be accepted for it nor will any intercession benefit it nor will they be aided subhanallah in the dunya in this dunya imagine maybe if your son did a mistake you will tell the police please punish me but don't touch my son he did the mistake so you want them to replace خلاص punish me and keep my son free put me in the jail punish me take from my money but don't touch my son but at the day of judgment never Allah says يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه لكل امرئ منهم يوم إذن شأنه هني at that day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying telling us يوم يف... the, the person will run away يوم يفر المرء من أخيه from his brother وأمه وأبيه and from the father and the mother يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمي وأبيه and also his wife and also from his children imagine in this dunya you are fighting for your children and your wife and your family and your parents but at the day of judgment you will disown every, everyone you will not care about anyone you يعني in dunya you'll pay money for your family okay you pay money. If your son needs money, you'll give him money. If he's in the prison, you'll pay money to, f- to free him from the, the jail. But at that day of judgment, of course, no money at that day. Only the hasanat and sayyat. The reward and the sins. So if your son at that day is asking you one hasana, one reward, you will not give him. So it is a serious thing. So it is serious. So brothers and sisters, don't think too much about your, about the surroundings. The main thing is you. And many times I mentioned the example. When you travel the airplane, okay, before, before we fly, okay, they, they, they put a short video, maybe two, three minutes. They tell you where are the exit uh, doors and uh, where is the oxygen. And, okay, so when they come to the point of oxygen, they they tell you, okay, the oxygen will come from the roof. If you have a kid with you, fix the oxygen for yourself, then for your kid. Okay, always I have, or many times I mentioned this example. Also in Islam, you should say you should save yourself before everyone. Because if you save yourself, then you can't save others. The same thing, imagine if you fix the oxygen for yourself, then you can manage to help the others. But imagine you you you, you are trying to fix the oxygen for your son or your daughter. Okay, and he is moving, crying, and removing the oxygen from his face. Then after maybe two, three minutes, you die because you don't have oxygen. And also your son will die because he didn't, you did not fix the oxygen for him. But imagine, if you fix the oxygen for yourself, then you can take your time to fix it for your son. The same thing, if I save myself, then inshallah I can't save the others. I will try my best. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Tahreem, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O oh, those who believe, protect yourselves and your families. So the scholars say, Allah mentioned yourself before the family. It means you are more important than your family. Of course, we are talking about the means of dunya. Sorry, the means of akhirah. Okay. But for example, if it is food, for example, I have a meal, okay, and my daughter or my son or my other, they don't have me, okay, I give them my meal. Or I, I take small piece and they eat more. But we are talking about the akhirah. <sighs> 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 
لا تجزي نفس عن نفس no soul will suffice for another soul at all and no compensation and no compensation will be accepted from it can you pay money at the day of judgment you say oh Allah I will pay one million million dinar to save myself from the hellfire this is not acceptable it's not acceptable at all not acceptable what can save you your religion your good good deeds nor will any intercession benefit it okay the shafa'a the intercession intercession is uses for the kuffar okay here the, the intercession is useless okay but later inshallah in ayatul kursi it is acceptable with a condition or two conditions we mentioned them or inshallah we'll mention them ولا تنفع الشفاعة ولا هم ينصرون nor will they be aided if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a person in, in the in the hellfire do you think that we can save him never we cannot save him and also the same thing if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put someone in paradise do you think that we will take him out from paradise to hellfire impossible then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَإِذِ بِتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُمْ قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا قَالَ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ قَالَ لَا يَنَالُ عَهْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ Okay, so here in this uh, ayah, Allah is starting to talk about Ibrahim. But still this is related with the children of Israel. And also four of us. Because if you remember we mentioned that all the sects, I mean all the religions, I mean the Muslims, the Jews, the Christians, even the Arabs, the Mushriks in the Arab world, in Mecca, all of them respect Ibrahim. And all of them say, Ibrahim belongs to us, alayhi salatu wassalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, told them, yani, please, logically, you are saying that Ibrahim was a Jew, and you say Ibrahim was a Christian. So Allah said, ما كان إبراهيم يهودية ولا نصرانية لكن حنيفة مسلمة Ibrahim was not a Jew, he was not a Christian He was حنيفا He was Muslim and he was موحدا He was يعني, uh, monotheism, following the monotheism توحيد, oneness for Allah سبحانه وتعالى يعني, Imagine uh, so, يعني, some, يعني, I remember one old lady she passed away, Allah yirhamah, our neighbor. She said, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was Shafi'i. Is it acceptable? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was Shafi'i. Okay, the Shafi'i, born after the Prophet وسلم, in about 200 years. The Prophet وسلم, born before the migration in 50 years. In about 50 years. And the Shafi'i born after the migration in 150 years. So she said, the Prophet was Shafi'i. So of course, يعني, we, we loved, she's an old lady. يعني. She's an old lady, Allah yirhamha. She passed away. Okay, so imagine, immediately we love when we hear that someone is saying that the Prophet was Shafi'i or the Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi was Maliki. Immediately we love. This is not acceptable. يعني, no need to discuss this person. Why? Because Shafi'i came after the Prophet ﷺ in 200 years. Okay? So, here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذِ بَتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُمْ And mention when we made, sorry, and mention, O Muhammad, when Ibrahim uh, was cried, by his Lord with words. It means commands. Uh, Abraham also, there is another recitation, Abraham. Yani now in our recitation, uh, in, in Kuwait, yani here in the, in the Gulf, our recitation is called Riwayat Hafs an Asim. Hafs an Asim. You know that in, uh, in the Quran, there are different and several ways in reading the Quran. القراءة السبع القراءة العشر 
the seven qiraat, the ten qiraat. Okay, yani reading the Quran different ways, but the same, the same writing, the same writing, but the reading in different way. Okay, maybe you notice in the people in Morocco, I don't know if anyone here went to Morocco or Algeria, Mauritania, okay, you notice them reading the Quran in a different way. It is common there, they read by the way of Warsh, Warsh and Nafa. Okay, I'm not experienced in the Qiraat. What we know here in Kuwait, we are reading mainly uh, Hafs. I, I don't know uh, the, the other Qiraat, Warsh, Qalun, even I don't know the names, okay? Uh, this is not compulsory, okay? But no doubt, there are scholars, they are uh, learning and teaching the Qiraat, okay? Because this is, this is Quran, this is Quran, okay? And when the, the Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, so one of the companions reading one surah, so Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, confused or he got angry, wondered. What, what you are? He said, I'm reading Quran. And then Umar ta'ala and pulled him immediately to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen to him. Or, or yani, he's reading the Quran in the wrong way. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Umar radiallahu ta'ala, release him. Give him the chance. So he said to that man, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ask him, Yalla, now recite the Quran. The man started to recite. Then he said to Umar, now you recite the same surah. Then Umar recited the same surah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Hakada unzilat wa hakada unzilat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Allah revealed the Quran, the same thing that you read, you read, and also the same thing that he did. You are correct and also he is correct. Okay? So there are qiraat in the, in the Quran. Okay, so when, uh, one of the qiraat, Ibrahim, but what we are reading now, Ibrahim. But there is another qiraat, they, they read it in the way, Ibrahim, like what is written in English. Okay, and mention of Muhammad when Ibrahim was cried by his Lord with words. Bikalimat, uh, words. The scholars see, say here, these words are commands. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim to do this and that. And this is a test. This is an exam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim. فَأَتَمَّهُنْ He fulfilled them. He fulfilled them. Okay, the scholars mention in the tafsir, what are these commands? Okay, what are these commands? طيب. So, uh, some scholars mentioned that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim, for example, to slaughter his son. The story, when uh, in Surah Al-Safat, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَ وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ وَنَادَيْنَهُ أَيَّا إِبْرَاهِيمُ قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَةِ Ibrahim said to his son, Ismail, قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَادَ تَرَى Ibrahim said to his son Ismail, O oh son, I saw a dream that I am sacrificing you. So what do you think? Immediately Ismail said, قَلْ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ O dad, do whatever you are ordered and I will be patient. Okay, so Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam fulfilled that command. But of course, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibrahim, خلاص, stop. We, are go we were testing you, examining you, and you passed the exam. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim uh, to do khitan, circumcision. And he did circumcision when his age was 80 or 83. Okay, and he told, he told him, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim many things and he passed the exam. He fulfilled all the things that were commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, the ayah, Okay, Allah 
Allah said, indeed, I will make you a leader for the people. قَالَ إِنِّي جَعِلْكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا Immediately, Ibrahim said, alayhi salatu wa salam, قَالَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَتِي And of my descendants, also my children, O oh Allah, they will be leaders, they will lead people. It means, imam of the deen, leaders in religion, of course, not leaders in dunya. It means scholars, prophets, alayhi salatu wa salam. قَالَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَتِي قَالَ لَا قَالَ لَا يَنَالُ عَهْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ So Ibrahim said, uh, Allah said, Indeed, I will make you a leader for the people. Ibrahim said, And of my descendants, Allah said, My covenant doesn't include the wrongdoers. A very nice answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a polite way. Allah did not say, No, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim that you'll have some Muslim children, non-Muslim children, okay? The Muslim children, some of them good, some of them bad. So, لا ينال أحد الظالمين The wrongdoers will not get my uh, covenant. Okay? قال لا ينال أحد الظالمين Okay? I stop here, brothers and sisters. جزاكم الله خير وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا